In this lecture, we'll introduce the topic of text classification and the naive Bayes algorithm, which is one of the most important ways of doing text classification. Let's begin by looking at some examples of text classification applications. Here I've shown an email that I actually received the other day. How do I know that this email is spam? Take a look at the mail and think of some features you might automatically extract from this email that tells you that it's spam. You might notice the word great, mis a misspelling of great. So we have a typo here. Maybe you might notice important notice and maybe an exclamation point. It's pretty rare that universities put exclamation points in their subject headers. You might notice that there's no um, Dan here. No, it's not addressed to me in particular. And we have undisclosed recipients and there's no particular address. And the URL is a little funny here. This is not a Stanford URL. Maybe the word exciting. Each of these features can be combined in a classifier to give us some evidence that we've got a piece of spam. Another important text classification task is authorship attribution. How do I know which author wrote which piece of text? One of the most famous examples of authorship attribution is the famous anonymous essays called the Federalist Papers that were written at the beginning of the history of our country in part to convince the state of New York to ratify the early Constitution. And three authors wrote various numbers of the letters, but 12 of the letters it wasn't clear which author wrote. And in 1963, um, the uh, and in 1963, Mosteller and Wallace showed that Bayesian methods were able to distinguish which letters were written by Madison and which letters were written by Hamilton. And the Bayesian methods that they used in 1963 gave rise to the naive Bayes method that we're going to be talking about today. Another text classification task is gender identification, determining if an author is male or female. Recent research in gender identification has shown that we can look at the number of pronouns and other features, the number of determiners, the number of noun phrases are uh, subtly indicative of the difference between male and female writers. Female writers tend to use more pronouns and male writers tend to use more facts and uh, determiners in their noun phrases. And you can see from that that um, here we have a lot of pronouns. And here we have a lot of determiners and, and factual sentences with, with uh, copula verbs. Um, and um, so you might determine that this is in fact a male and this is a female, and that would be correct. This is um, the author Margaret Drabble and this is the author Anthony Gray. Another text classification task is sentiment analysis. And one of the classic sentiment analysis tasks is movie review identification. Given a review, whether it's a movie or a product, can I tell whether this review is positive or negative? And although I'm gonna show you an example here from movies, this could apply to any product review for any, any product or service that you might find on the web. So this is actually a very important commercial application. So um, suppose we saw a review that said unbelievably disappointing. Well, that's clearly a negative review how about full of zany characters and richly applied satire? Positive. How about this is the greatest screwball comedy ever filmed? We've got words like greatest or greatest ever. Um, that's very positive. How about it was pathetic? The worst part about it was the boxing scenes. Here we've got evidence like pathetic and worst and so on to tell us that this is in fact a negative review. Text classification often We also apply text classification to scientific articles. For example, deciding what the topic of a particular article in a database like Medline might be. For example, we might have to decide in automatically indexing an article which of various subjects, antagonist or blood supply or drug therapy or epidemiology, apply to any particular article that's written, that's in our database. So in summary, text classification is the task of assigning any kind of topic category 
to any piece of text. And that could be subject categories in, a, in, a, in some kind of an online database. It can be detecting spam. It can be choosing an author from a set of authors, choosing their gender, or maybe it's their age. You want to find young writers or old writers, telling if a language, uh, deciding if a text was written in one language versus another language, and the important commercial application of sentiment analysis. All of these are examples of text classification. Let's define the task of text classification. We have, as input, a document, D, and then a fixed set of classes, a set C, with J classes, C1, C2, up till Cj. And our goal, given this document and this set of classes, is to predict a class C from that set of classes. So our job is to take a document and assign a class to that document. How do we do this? The simplest possible text classification method is to use handwritten rules. So for example, if we're doing spam detection, we might just have a list of, of bad email addresses, a blacklist, that these people are probably spammers. Or we might look for phrases like millions of dollars or you have been selected. These are good indications that we have spam. And if these rules are carefully refined by an expert, you can get high accuracy from handwritten rules. But in general, building and maintaining these rules is expensive. So although hand-coded rules are often used as part of, an, of a system of text classification, we, we generally combine that with an important method from machine learning. This method is supervised machine learning. So in supervised machine learning, we have a document D, just as we did before, and a fixed set of classes, as we did before. But we need one more thing now. We need a training set of some, some documents that have been hand-labeled for their class. So we have, for document one, we know that it's in class one. For document two, it's in some other class. And maybe for document M, we have a label for the class of document M. So given the document, the set of classes, and the fixed um, and the training set of hand-labeled documents, the goal of machine learning is to produce a classifier, and we'll use gamma to refer to the classifier, and gamma is a function that, given a new document, will give us the class. So given a set of training labels of documents and classes, we'll learn a classifier that maps a document to a class. There's lots of kinds of uh, machine learning classifiers. We're going to talk today about naive Bayes, but we'll see, we'll look later in the course, we'll talk about logistic regression, and we'll touch on other kinds of classifiers like support vector machines, also called SVMs, k-nearest neighbors, lots of other classifiers. No matter which classifier we use, the task of text classification is to take a document, its text, other kinds of features, and uh, extract features that represent the document and build a classifier that can tell us which class the document belongs to.